Hello, it is Sunday, November 12th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. I've just recorded this entire introductory bit on the wrong uh, recording template. I was using the one I use for plus words, so it was just a video, just a would have just been a video of me talking about solving a crossword for half an hour, 45 minutes, however long, uh, with a completed, uh, completely a static plus word window. I'm glad I noticed that before I actually pressed play on the video. In any case, it's a, I'm here now, I can see that it's the correct video. So um, it's Sunday. Welcome to the Sunday New York Times crossword. Big jumbo sized bonus grid. We've got a title right on the money. So maybe a currency related theme, who knows. And uh, I can see some circled cells in the grid, actually, that I didn't notice the last time I was recording this intro just a moment ago. In any case, this uh, circled thematic Sunday edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Quotidia File, Overfull Hitbox, Jake Rodkin, and of course, as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are the benefactors. They are among the benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, and they directly support this channel and this series. They keep it all going, and I'm very grateful to them for that. So if uh, if you're among that group, thank you to you as well. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. There, of course, you can find the bonus videos, which I have realized a moment ago that uh, does not yet include the latest boss words fall themeless league puzzle. So I'm sorry about that. I do need to get that recorded for you. I'll do that as soon as I can. And um, there's, of course, the rest of the bonus videos up there. Thanks to everybody who's a patron. And if you'd like to become one, um, well, I think I already said how. So <laughs> patreon.com slash daily solve or the link. All right, let's get on with it. Um, there's also the daily solve discord chat server, of course. And there is the um, uh, the channel that you can subscribe to on YouTube. Click the links and uh like them and subscribe and everything. Oh boy, <laughs> having to do this twice seems to have really discombobulated me, but I don't want to do it a third time. So let's just get on with the solve. It's a Sunday puzzle. It's entitled Right on the Money. Uh, it will, of course, have a theme. It's a large grid and it was constructed by Garrett Chalfin, who has constructed a small handful of puzzles for the New York Times. So welcome back to him. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, see what this big grid is all about today. Landscapers Purchase. Sod, maybe? Uh, let's see. Product safety indicator. A seal, maybe. So it could be a case where food or, or, or anything with some sort of time-sensitive or, I don't know, toxic component has a seal that you can see if it's broken or medicine, maybe. Uh, Princess Fiona EG is an ogre from the Shrek films, I'm 90% certain. And treats favorably or has a very good effect. So often when, with these, we don't see these that often, but when when there's a slash in the clue like this and it divides two different definitions, usually that's related to the theme of the crossword. Um, but let's look at, at this. Anton Blank, food critic in Ratatouille. Uh, Anton Ego is the food critic from the film Ratatouille, the animated film. And here we have Blank, you ready? Are you ready? Of course, is the, the answer. And here we have uh, tous les jours, French for every day. So that's technically all of the days, but or all the days. But uh, you can use it to mean every day. All right. Treats favorably had a very good effect. Hmm. I don't know. What about this circled, these circled cells here? Emerged as a victor. Well, that, oh, one. Right. Okay. So that could be the Korean one. Um, so that is right on the money in the sense that it's a, it's a currency. Uh, so I think that's, yeah. So these, these are all going to be right. Okay. So writer, Ein Rand, there we go. Another currency. So are we, are we just going to have these throughout poet Ezra pound, right? Of course, here in the UK, uh, here we have not fake, uh, real or real, the Brazilian currency. And then uh, craving would be a yen, the Japanese yen. So there we go. We've, um, We've uh, completed it, and the Rand is that South Af is that South Af South African? Um, pretty sure that's the case. Um, hope I'm not misremembering. Uh, but there we go. We've got five currencies. So part of the part of the crossword we've filled out immediately. I have to assume that that's not the whole thing because we've got these um, slash clues and uh, treats favorably. Does 
well or do, treats favorably does hmm, has a very good effect. Oh, does wonders. Right, okay. So if you if something has a very good effect, it does uh, wonders. So I bet what we're doing is we're kind of following the currency around and going down here. Does that mean... So maybe this for, maybe maybe treats favorably it just goes straight down without following the without following the money follow the money by the way is a good I wonder if that'll be in the grid somewhere follow the money because that's a good description of this theme uh it treats favorably does well too I don't think that that doesn't match what about this back in the good old days once you could say once back then and to fight for is to I'm not sure. Here we have sweetly in scores as uh, so dolce, which which would mean literally uh, sweetly, but you'll see it used in in music notation. So uh, maybe this is does well. Does well by treats favorably. Maybe he did well by you. That would work. One might read caution, messy eater, a bib, maybe a child's bib. And you're going to pay for this. Uh, debt. You will literally pay for debt. And so, as usual, with the exclamation point clues, when they're not enclosed in quotation marks, it means it's something being said about the answer rather than defining the answer. So you might say about debt, you're going to pay for this. All right. So fight for. Why? How can I not see what this is? It's almost complete to fight for something to... I, sorry, it's ridiculous that I can't see that answer. It's completely preposterous. Offend, because here's the first blank Shakespeare collection, first folio. I think it was just within the last few days, maybe a notable anniversary of the publication of the first folio. Um, sort of uh, collection of Shakespeare's works. Okay, so uh, Peabody winning journalist Linda. Ooh, I'm not sure, actually. Ellersby or something. I'm not sure. Playroom collection would be a collection of toys, a child's playroom. And a pool locale could be at a spa, I suppose. A degree for most profs would be, or degrees, sorry, plural for most profs, important because this would be PhDs, of course. And a bracelet, a bracelet bit, maybe a bead, a bead bracelet could be. A twilled fabric, oh, uh, is it, is it Surge? That looks familiar. That looks right to me. But let's we have to check the crosses because I'm not certain. Targets of some wipes. Germs, maybe? Hope to wipe off germs. And then, oh, here, right, another one of these, of course. Masters or elaborate. So if you elaborated on something, you expounded on it. So there we go. And then... Uh, masters would of course be experts. There we go. So that's straightforward. So that that does work that way. I mean, I guess we all. I guess we did see that by does well by. I never, I never went back and observed that that had been confirmed, but it, it seems to have been. So here we have where to see heads of gladiators informally. Oh right, uh, Amex cards. Is that true? I thought, I thought American Express's logo was a centurion. Gladiators. Is there informally, right? Oh, the informally is just because it's Amex rather than American Express um, credit card company. Um, I wouldn't have thought gladiators and, and centurions were interchangeable. Um, I don't know. The, the, I, I mean, I'm no expert on, on classical Rome, so someone maybe can correct me on that. Uh, claim blank. Uh, to claim something would be to allege it, to to uh, declare something that you believe to be true, or at least that you're <laughs> you're claiming in the moment to be true. Uh, actress close, so Glenn Close, of course, as an actor, and then rest. If something rests atop something, it lies on it. So rest atop, lie on. I would think fifty fifty. E G would be a tie, as I guess. So I, I suppose in this case, fifty fifty is scores of fifty to fifty rather than. Um, odds, because I don't think you'd call odds a tie, would you? I don't know. Someone more familiar with gambling might, might answer that. 
uh, to grovel would be to, not sure. Film company behind Amadeus and Platoon. Wow, that's a, that's fairly obscure. <laughs> is it Orion? I mean, I, in five letters ending with O-N, Orion is a company that, I mean, I do remember, their logo does seem to be on films of broadly that era. So maybe that's the answer. Amadeus is one of my absolute favorite films ever. Uh, grovel. I'm not sure. Speaks loudly. Blunders? I'm not certain that's right. Something dot something. Say, oh, a URL, a web address, a uniform resource locator. Fall fruit, a pear, maybe? Um, I'm mainly guessing based on the presence of that R in a four letter word. Downright, but I'm not certain about it. Uh, downright. Hmm. That's downright true. That's, yeah, I'm not sure. It may deliver a punch. A ladle, right. You could literally, you know, uh, portion out, uh, punch the drink with a ladle, a large spoon. So, oh, if it's downright too true, it's plain true. There we go. That's the answer, I think. What might, what may come before today? Right. Maybe this is, maybe this is plum, actually which can also sort of mean downright, because then this could be USA Today, which is the name of a, a newspaper, obviously a US newspaper. So maybe maybe that is the case. And then gig part, um, oh, a meg, as in a gigabyte. Part of a gigabyte is a megabyte. There we go. And then to get bigger is to broaden, perhaps. Come on would be a teaser, maybe, a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, a, a, um, I don't know, sort of light temptation, I guess. And then if one enjoyed oneself, one had a good time. So what was this? Speaks loudly, loudly is thunders. Okay, there we go. That's perfectly reasonable. Just didn't see it. Jacinda Ardern, New Zealand prime minister who at 37 was the world's youngest female head of government. There we go. All right. And to grovel would be to eat dirt, sort of to metaphorically kind of to eat dirt, to... Um, you know, abase yourself, I guess. And blindly punch is to hit at, is it? Does that need to be blindly? I guess it can be. If you'll allow me to butt in, and this is in brackets, which means it's, um, you know, going to be something nonverbal or symbolic, maybe a gesture or a sound, in this case, um, the sort of clearing your throat. And big, 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 something, something big, big, big could be described as epic, perhaps. And like a momentous occasion or an office uh, communique, uh, right? And here we're going to be using our, our memorandum, we're going to be using our currency. So memorandum, there we go. And then our first one, like a momentous occasion would be memorable. There we go. All right. That worked well. So it's, we're sort of creating little chairs almost because we've got one, we've got the sort of back of the chair and, and maybe the back two legs that go straight down. And then we've got the seat. And then the front two legs, which I can't properly select here, but you see, I guess it's easier to see on this without the crosses yet filled in. But let's see if we can fill them in. Lollipop with a mystery flavor. Right. Wow. I haven't thought about these in a very long time, but um, dum-dums are lollipops. I didn't know. I didn't remember they had a mystery flavor, but I do remember the name dum-dum as being these very small little lollipops. Okay. Blank years, old age. Um, I mean, I, you hear you, you hear people reference the ripe old age or r riper years, old age. R Not quite sure. I see exactly what form of the word we're looking for. Firefighter famous for extinguishing burning wells. Um, I don't know oil wells, presumably. I'm not sure. Features of telephone directories area. Uh, code maps, area code maps, must be that. Okay, fair enough. Um, euphemistic, oh, you know what, actually, sorry, let's fill, let's finish this off because this is one of these areas that's now fully enclosed in the sense that we've already gotten all the help we're going to get from the rest of the puzzle in here. 
these cells will have to be solved without any additional crosses from the exterior. So we may as well just go ahead and, and figure it out. Gotcha. Aha, maybe? Let's try that, see if it works. Someone's je ne sais quoi. So someone's literally, I don't know what, but it's kind of someone's aura, actually. Here it is. Yes, someone's kind of intangible quality or, or, or vibe or, or what have you. Padlock holder would be a hasp of a lock a door. Well, not a door in this case of a padlock. So there we go. Sorry to say, alas, you could say, oh, it's unfor how unfortunate, alas. And then word with purpose or personality, dual purpose or dual, dual personality are both phrases. And then major part of astronomy, question mark. So the question mark indicating a bit of a pun would be Ursa, Ursa Major, the great bear, the uh, constellation in the sky. So there we go. Okay, so here we have the E of ESL for short. Um, that is an abbreviation for English as a second language. And of course, because of the for short, we're also abbreviating the individual component. So English gets abbreviated to ENG. Euphemistic cry of frustration. Euphemistic. Hmm. Dang something, I'm not sure. Movers and shakers. And right here's our fire, well-extinguishing firefighter. Japanese buckwheat noodle. Soba is a Japanese buckwheat noodle. So there we go. 2022 culinary black comedy with the... Oh, right. I didn't see this. I was sort of interested in, but then I didn't, didn't get around to it. But the menu, at least I know it exists. Uh, robotic anime genre. <laughs> robotic anime genre. M mech. Mecha. There we go. I'm fairly certain that's correct. I think that's like, um, I don't know, like Voltron and things like that. Okay, let's go on. Enter. In, in, input, as in data. There we go. All right, switches allegiances as a spy. Switches allegiances as a spy. Dupes or... This will be an ob this will be obvious when I see it, and I just can't think right now. It can be a lifesaver in brief. CPR, right? Pulmonary, um, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, yes, can literally save your life. I think in most cases it doesn't, but but it can. Okay, there we go. Switches allegiances, turns. Yes, okay, you can turn a spy, switch their allegiance, or you yourself can turn. All right, so old nomad of Central Asia, Hun, there we go, most famous, I suppose, um, in the popular imagination for Attila the Hun. And then little fights could be spats. You could have a spat with somebody, a little fight. So dad, dad gummit? I guess when this says euphemistic, what it means is because you're, you know, it would be an oath. It would be an oath that's sort of... Um, you know, that I guess would be kind of mildly blasphemous, except that it's, except that you're kind of softening the, uh, the, the references to God to, to, to be euphemistic. I think that's probably what that means by euphemistic cry of fr frustration. Um, I wouldn't have thought to describe something like this as euphemistic, but I think, that, which is was the only reason I'm sort of addressing it because it wouldn't have occurred to me, but I think that's what that's getting at. Okay. So firefighter famous for extinguishing burning walls. Wells, sorry, Wells. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm still not seeing that. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess this, oh, oops. I don't know what I'm doing there. Uh, it occurs to me this D could be an N or a D. Probably dang gum it. Nah, probably not. I think it's, I think it's a D. Okay. Movers and shakers. Oh, doers. People who do things are movers and shakers. And then prefix with sphere. Heliosphere, maybe? I'm not certain that that's right. Peak in the Odyssey, um, Mount Osa. Oh, that, that would this that would make this prefix helio, or at least it would make it possible to be helio. Well, what about this one? Got less hairy. Oh yeah, you shed hair, so shedded. Okay, I guess this is heliosphere, like the sun, I suppose. Firefighter famous, right? Oh, 
Oh, weird. Okay, I have seen this person referenced before. Red Adair. I don't know very much about they. They had a um, their famous firefighter who had an entertainment career as well. They were on television. I don't know anything about this person other than what I've just said. Essentially, um, I, you know, I couldn't. I wouldn't recognize them in a photograph or anything like that. But I've seen the name referenced before. I, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you other than I'm. I'm very confident this is the answer. Red Adair. And then here we have riper. Your oh, your riper years. I see. You're in your riper years. That does sound better when I sort of just think about it properly. Okay. Uh, satyrs say are uh, leerers. So these creatures in Greek mythology are depicted as being, uh, you know, promiscuous and and I don't know. I guess sort of sexually predatory. Uh, so there we go gives kudos. Uh, you laud someone, you give them kudos. You praise them. And flying fish eaters are uh, urns. So these are uh, seabirds. There we go. All right. Dark green Indian dish. Sog, um, spinach. You can have sog alu or sog paneer or something. Uh, let's see. Group that goes on tour. The PGA, the Professional Golf Association, and then they're no longer, a B, and, uh, which is referring to the PGA Tour, I think, and then they're no longer fresh, stale, or they're no longer fresh. Hmm. Prefix with thesis, apotheosis. No, 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 no. That doesn't <laughs> doesn't work anyway. It doesn't say theosis, does it? Um, Antithesis. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So you could have thesis, antithesis, synthesis, for instance. Okay, they're no longer fresh. I don't know. There's an S on the end, I guess. Totally committed to. Dead set on. That's it. Okay. Um, I still don't see what they're no longer fresh are. Worker at the Genius Bar. So this being capitalized suggests it's a brand name, which it is. It's referring to the uh, Apple stores. So a tech techie, maybe? So I think the Genius Bar, these are the people who um, provide tech support for your phone or your computer or whatever at an Apple store. So yeah, techie, maybe. And then part of a furniture measurement could be the depth. So you take length, height, and depth measurements. And then... Are no longer fresh. I don't know what this is. I might have something wrong here. Figure of speech for which in which words are reversed for effect, like never let a fool kiss you or a kiss fool you. Oh, I don't know. It probably ends with ism, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's see if that helps. Uh, gave, or sorry, give lip service. I don't know. It's a pun. I mean, we've got the question mark indicator. So could be something to do with a kiss. Could be something to do with sort of makeup, maybe. Could be something to do with lip service. I don't know, the lip of a jug or something? I don't know why that would be the case. Lip service. I'm not sure. Serves right. Um, aces, I guess. And maybe in tennis, you you serve well. You serve right correctly, and the opponent can't, re can't return it, maybe. Large as a lead, a crushing lead, a um, commanding lead. Maybe this is not an ism. It is a commanding lead. Okay, right. You could have a commanding lead over an opponent. Uh, blow, I'm not sure. Uh, 60 minuti would be uh, 60 minutes to an hour in um, Italian, right? And then blow, erase, erode, give lip service. Stylish women's shoes, pumps, there we go. So, oh, so, oh, right, okay, so you give someone lip in the sense that you, um, you uh, talk back to them or you're, you're um, you know, you're getting smart with them, so you give them lip, you give them sass. So, oh, to blow is to erupt. You say, I'm going to blow, I'm going to erupt, I'm going to really blow up here. I'm going to get fear, become furious. Twit to a Brit. 
twit to a Brit. I mean, a Pratt maybe? I was trying to think of a, of a word to describe someone as kind of an annoying, you know, irritating person or maybe a bit of an idiot. A Pratt. Let's see if that works. Not a problem. Sure. Oh, right. Okay. So it's in quotation marks. So it's something you're saying. Sure. Not a problem. And then are you satisfied or common fairy tale conclusion? Right. And here we've got another one of these. So the uh, common fairy tale conclusion would be a happy ending. And that's in fact, almost entirely already in. So happy ending. We can follow it along. And then the first bit is, are you satisfied? Happy now? You can, oops. Happy now? You can ask. There we go. Novelist Patchett, Anne Patchett, who wrote, um, uh, oh God, am I thinking of the right person? Bel Canto, which is a great book, and uh, State of Wonder. It's another one of her novels that I absolutely love. I really love that book. Um, anyway, they're both great. Uh, she's written more than that as well. Go down slightly would be to dip, to decline a bit, and some motel prohibitions. Pets, I guess. Pets would be prohibited in many motels, I suppose. Number 34. I don't know. Um, is that referring, that's surely, is that referring to Clue 34? Writer Ayn Rand? I don't think so. I don't know. Not sure what's going on with that. Sorry. Trawlers need, so if you're trawling for fish, for instance, you'd need a net. And then uh, much of the planet Saturn would be gas. Okay, store whose name is an acronym, IKEA, right, there we go. I think it's an acronym for um, the founder and his hometown, maybe, something like that. I know that someone's explained it to me in comments before. That's the best I can remember. Oh, president, the 34th president of the United States is Ike Dwight D. Eisenhower. Right, okay, that was very, that was very um, camouflaged and or, or sort of obscurely hinted, but there we go. I think that's the answer. Uh the crosses are obviously helpful there. Um, well, in my case, I had it fully crossed. So, yeah, okay, I think we've got that. Uh, here we have titular feature of fiction's Lisbeth Salander. Right, okay, I did read these back when they came out. These are the uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo books um, by Stig Larsson. So I think Dragon Tattoo will be the actual answer, and it appears to be. King Tut, during most of his reign, a teen, a teenager... Uh, famously a kind of boy king. And then uh, Chichen Itza, ancient Mayan city. There we go. Uh, speaking of uh, old things, I guess. Uh, Hamburg refusal. Um, so Hamburg city in Germany, and as is so often the case, we're simply using a place name to refer to the language spoken in that place. So nine would be a refusal in German, no. Bad impression could be... A dent, maybe? So an, a, a physical impression rather than an impression in the meaning a sense you get of something. So a dent in a, I don't know, a vehicle, maybe. And then red army member. So you could have army ant, red, red ant. There we go. Oomph would be zing, I guess. You do something with zing, with oomph, with enthusiasm, perhaps. And then movie hero introduced in 1981 would be Indiana Jones in the film um, The Raiders of the Lost Ark. Great movie, of course. And part of a potter's process would be... Part of a potter's process. Oh, right. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. This is the first half, so it's the one that goes straight down. Uh, curing. Uh, do you, you, you cure the um, ceramic, presumably. And then parts of a building's safety system. Oh, maybe that's not right. This will be something alarms. Uh, oh, fire alarms, firing. Okay, there we go. Right. Okay, you fire the you fire the the ceramic. That makes sense in a kiln or something. All right, great. So there we have that. And then Arthur of the Golden Girls. So B. Arthur, famous, uh, famously of the sitcom The Golden Girls. And captain of MLB's Swingin' A's of the 1970s. I haven't the slightest clue, unsurprisingly, if you've been watching these videos for long. Novelist Tammy. Tammy Hogue. Um, it's H-O-A-G, I think. 
lots of novelists today. Do we have we had three maybe? Maybe just two. Am I misremembering that? I don't know. Anyway, that was hilarious in text speak. L M F A O. There we go. So a, a, a way to be to indicate extreme uh, positive reaction to something funny. Classifies um, assorts maybe. Yeah, actually, that could that could be the answer. That could be. The, I said that speculatively, but it does fit. Application of polish, e.g., so a coat of polish on I don't know anything nails or something in your home or whatever shoes, I guess. Captain of MLB's. Sw- oh, right, this I don't know. <laughs> what a Tyrannosaurus Rex grapples with: tiny hands, small arms. Oh, maybe it is small arms. Oh, that's funny. I was sort of saying that as a joke, but I think the clue is meant as a, a bit of a joke. Hence the punny question mark indicator. So a Tyrannosaurus Rex grapples with, you know, very small arms. Uh, I'm not certain that's right, but let's check the crosses. Whole shebang. Oh, maybe it is because whole shebang would be the gamut. Something runs the gamut, it, it, the full spectrum, the whole shebang. Miss could be, a miss could be a lass, maybe a, a young girl, perhaps. Let's see if that works here. To, yes, to drench someone with water would be to douse them. And then a uh, hasty signature, often a scribble. You could very hastily sign something and essentially just scribble out a letter or two. So here we have Sal Banda, maybe? Bando? Banda? Oops. Um, blank Vincent Amor. Uh, I think this is, this is Love Conquers All. Uh, let's see. Uh, primatologist Goodall, Jane Goodall. So we certainly have a lot of people being referenced in general today, regardless. Oh, Omnia, Omnia, Vincent, Vince, Vincent de Moore. Okay, I'm certainly no no Latin scholar, that's for sure, but um, but I think that'll be it. Motherless calf. I don't know. Maybe this is wrong. I don't know. Caught. If you caught something, you've if you've caught something, you've seen it. In other words, oh, I caught that. I've I've seen it. It could be. Not certain that's right, but it might be. Christopher Columbus, e.g., a, a Genoan, so he's, he was from Genoa. Yeah, you know, we do have quite a few references to historical people, or, well, historical people or current day cultural figures, I suppose. Um, figures in Islamic mythology. Uh, genie? Is that right? Early evening hour, seven, sort of early in the evening, that looks right. Actress Jennifer, yeah, here, look, here's another, another name, Jennifer Aniston, certainly a, a famous actor, and then lead into gender could be cisgender, so not, not transgender, and then Goldman Sachs, the investment bank, they're no longer fresh, right, here, we're back to this thing that's been baffling me, this, oh, this, oh it's a chiasmus, right, I do know that, phrase. I, I would absolutely not, you could have given me an hour and I don't think I would have remembered this on my own steam, but with the crosses, I, I, it now does come to mind. So figure of speech in which a word, in which words are reversed for effect, like never let a fool kiss you or a kiss fool you. That's a chiasmus. So there we go. I recognize it when I see it, but I need, I absolutely needed those crosses. So then what is this? Oh, they're no longer fresh or softs. Another thing I wouldn't have thought of without, in this case, I guess, getting not just the the uh, the crosses, but the entire thing. So, um, well, I can, by that, I guess I mean all of the crosses. So freshmen become sophomores and then they're no longer fresh. So this is referring to kind of children in secondary school or university, I guess. All right, there we go. Great. Formulates as a plan, devises a plan. And then motherless calf is a doki. Okay, I guess I have heard that used before. It's not in my active vocabulary, but but there we go. All right. I think that's what in sort of Old West songs like Get On Little Doggies, I think that's what that's referring to. Anyway, uh, Socrate composer? Is that Eric Satie? Can't think of this piece off the top of my head, but uh, Socrate, I guess he's French. So um, yeah, I'll have to look that up. I suspect that's the answer though. Displayed. If something's on a displayed, it's on view. And then blobby parts of blobfish are there what? 
Refusals are no's, simply enough. Uh, they might be wall-mounted televisions. TVs could be wall-mounted. And year abroad could be anno or anyo. I mean, I guess it depends where you are in the world. But um, blobby parts of blobfish. Or they're noses, I suppose. There we go. All right. Uh, Vassal's plot could be a, um, a fief. So this is referring to a kind of feudal system, a fief, fiefdom, Vassal's plot. And then enjoys doing, if one enjoys doing nothing, one loafs, one sort of sits around. Taunt in a way is, uh, uh, I can't say that immediately. That's annoying. Stuff refineries refine. Oil could be refined in a refinery. And Senator Klobuchar, here's yet another person being referenced. So Amy Klobuchar is a U.S. senator. And then, oh, Mimic. Oh, oh, I see. It's in a way. Yeah, this in a way, you always have to watch out for that. Um, one way to taunt somebody would be to mimic them. But of course, mimicking is not intrinsically taunting. So that's why it's not a strict synonym. It's just an example of this thing. And then a Philadelphia athlete, Philadelphia Flyers. I, I, I mean, I have at least heard that before. I think that was referenced in the puzzle maybe in the last week or so. Let's see. Uh, I think this is the complete answer. It is. That is today's crossword right on the money. So there we go. A, a fairly simple theme, I would say, all things considered. And it was one of these where um, it was sort of a two-part theme in the sense that we had the currency names spelled out and then we had the answers that kind of divided themselves along this branching path. Um, but the first bit, you could just go right ahead and fill in. Um, or at least that's what I chose to do. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And today I did because they were circled and they were tempting. So there we go. We've got um, the one splitting up does well by and does wonders. We've got the rand splitting up memorable and memorandum. The pound divides experts and expounded. The real divides firing and fire alarms. And finally, the yen splits up happy now and happy ending, an appropriate last clue. And we didn't ever have a reference to follow the money, which I think could have been, uh, that could have, oh, I see right on the money because we sort of turn right. I see how it goes. Although I guess from the perspective of, you know, if you were in a little you were walking along this pathway yourself, this would be turning left. But from our perspective, I suppose it is a right turn. Uh, anyway, no follow the money in here. That would have been an alternate title or maybe a revealer um, written somewhere in the grid. Alas, it was not to be, speaking of alas. And uh, that's that. That's that for today's crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the much shorter, uh, still themed, but simpler, smaller Monday crossword. So join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Mm -hmm.